Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Gabriella. I make videos about fragrance, astrology, self-care, mental health. I do vlogs and basically whatever else I feel like talking about. So if that sounds like your jam, please stick around and subscribe. Today we have another installment in my Venus Signs series. And today is gonna be, it's another one of my choices because if you'd like to vote on what the next Venus sign is, that I do a video on, you gotta go to my Instagram and I put little polls in my stories and you can choose. Um, but today is my choice. It is Venus and Scorpio because I feel like people want a little insight into Venus and Scorpio. So I am gonna chat a little bit about what they look for, what they, uh, their love languages, how they are as a partner, and instead of just chatting, let's just dive right in, okay? Let's go. I'm giving myself kind of Bridget Bardot as the Hamburglar vibes, okay? All right, so I've got some notes here that I'm gonna reference, but I don't wanna look down too much. So the first thing I wrote down, I just kind of did this instinctively, is their love runs deep, but not loudly. So I did Venus and Leo before this, and Venus and Leo love is loud. And louder does not necessarily mean better. We all know, most of us, that Scorpios are known for being secretive, they're known for being kind of the one in the back corner observing. Um, so it's it's really no surprise that when when Venus falls in Scorpio, the love is very deep, but not loud. A Venus in Scorpio is not the kind that needs to be posting you all the time on social media or needs you to be posting them. The trust in the relationship is about you too and everything around is extra and kind of just fluff, meaningless. Scorpio energy people love to see through things, they love to cut through the BS. And for a lot of Venus and Scorpio people, depending on the rest of the chart, social media and going to events together and showing off, that might be BS. They might be like, that's low level stuff. I'm here for that soul to soul connection, soul body mind connection, and everything else is BS. So as long as I feel this connection with you, that's what's holding me down, that's what's important to me. So if you are involved with a Venus and Scorpio person and they are not super showy about you, it's one of those signs that you don't need to take that much concern. Of course, express what you might need, but it's not as concerning as if uh, a Venus in, in Leo were not showing you off. Uh, they don't need anyone else's approval. They don't need anyone else's check mark or signature on who they love, the partner they choose, the way they choose to love. Um, which I think is why Scorpio, all, people always think they're like kinky and freaky and that is totally not the case at all um, with some Scorpio people. It's not really always about kinks, it's just they can be sexual and erotic but it doesn't mean that that they, they can't be just vanilla. But um, I think it's because they express themselves, including their sexuality, without needing the approval of others. And that already seems like kinky, because we have so many taboos about, you're not supposed to like this, you're not supposed to do this, so if you do, you're kinky. But Scorpio is really like, I don't care if it's, if it's normal, if you think it's okay or not, I don't care. It's about me and my partner. What's interesting about Scorpio too is because everyone thinks they're super sexual and whatever, they're not usually gonna be into crazy PDA. Um, they might give you PDA as a way to sort of show others that they that you are theirs because they can be quite possessive. Maybe if, if not too many people are watching, but I'm not thinking of Venus and Scorpio being the person like in a park on the bench at 2, p 2 p.m. like going at it with you, like making out and stuff. I just, not because they would be ashamed because again, they, they, they pride themselves in not caring what other people think. It's more just like that's not for pub the public eye. I don't need... You know, they don't like to really put on a show in that sense, draw attention. They might see that as kind of tacky and just not their thing. More subtle PDA though, like, you know, touching your back during a concert, holding your lower back, or, um, you know, if they see someone checking you out, touching you, they can be touchy when it comes to asserting their dominance a little bit as far as like, hey, this is my partner. So that's a thing. But as far as obnoxious PDA, drawing a lot of attention, um, Tom Cruise jumping on this sofa, that's not, I don't see it that way. So yeah, they can be jealous and a bit possessive. Um, you know, I I think of the scorpion, but I also sort of think of like a, not really a dragon, but something that's like, this is my precious, this is my precious thing, don't come near it or I'll sting you. Um, and that can just be inherent with them. They can sort of 
depending on how much they've worked on themselves, they can inherently have a little bit of defensiveness and a little bit of being on guard when it comes to love, having that placement. But trust is so important to them and once you have gained their trust by just proving yourself to be a good person, um, also sharing deeper, darker things with them, they really bond over those deep conversations and things that are not surface level, anything not surface level, they will feel establishes trust with you. They will be able to be less defensive. If you have trust issues and you are going after a Venus and Scorpio, good luck because two people who are on the defense about trust and being betrayed and things like that, uh, it might just be a whole, a whole mess of you both reading into things and, and kind of like creating scenarios that aren't there. So make sure you both are evolved. I would say this about any sign. Make sure you're both evolved. Uh, they're very wary to being made a fool of, to being crossed in love. Scorpio, again, they like to see through people. They like the idea that they can see through people. So they want to know sort of what makes people tick. They want to know what's going on. They can be quite calculating in the sense of like, um, if someone is really sweeping them off their feet, they might be a little wary and be like, Whoa, uh, this, I don't trust this. There's got to be something else. This person is, is using me for something or maybe they don't really like me or they can be a little bit paranoid sometimes when it comes to accepting love and then definitely who they give their love to as well. It's a slow opening. Even though Scorpios really, when they when they fall, they fall hard and it, it, it oftentimes is for these people who may not be good for them. It's almost like they have to pursue this pain and this suffering to be reborn because that's the whole Scorpio vibe. That's the whole Scorpio life lesson is being reborn and, and having the ego crushed and ego rebirth. So um, when it comes to love, that's what they're going to feel. They might have a lot of turmoil when it comes to relationships because they often also feel that they love much deeper than most people do. So if they fall for someone who just can't love them as deeply as they do or they're not connecting on a deep level but they're still attracted and there's really nothing they can do about it because that's just how the person is, it's going to cause, cause them pain. Um, and as much as they want to avoid being betrayed or being cheated on, things like that, I don't really believe it's much that can be avoided. You know, there's not much you can do to stop somebody else from doing what they will do. Uh, so Venus and Scorpio may encounter pain in their love life where they just have to kind of pick themselves up again from a lot of heartbreaks and they feel deeply. So it's going to take them longer to move on than others. They just, they were they emotionally imprint. It feels like what's wonderful about Scorpio is because they're so deep and they can be so self-aware that they really can do that dark that dark shadow work. So hopefully, if the Venus and Scorpio has done that, then they can be a, an even more loving, uh, wise partner for it, for their suffering, um, not, not just kind of see it as, as battle scars that they had to endure. You know, people have that misunderstanding or that sort of stereotype idea that Scorpio is just all about sex and physical connection and being erotic and things like that and without the emotional connection without the darkness um and by by darkness i mean showing parts of them that aren't directly in the light that they don't just go around parading to other people the sex doesn't mean anything a scorpio uh probably would rather not have one night stands and things like that especially a venus and scorpio because it's love is very deep for them so um maybe if they've got their mars and aries they could mess around a little bit but they will keep that love part of themselves separate um you know if they know that they're not going to have a deep connection with that person maybe they could they could do some physical stuff but when it comes to having a partner they need an emotional connection more than they even need a physical connection. If the emotional connection is not there, the physical connection will not be satisfying and will not be enough to sustain a relationship for a long time. It's just not going to fulfill them. They are also quite picky because like I said, Scorpios like cut out the BS. They don't like surface level stuff. They don't like fake. I find Scorpio placements are really wary and really, yeah, they're really just into this is fake, that's fake that's phony they're really sensitive to anything that even seems phony to them they're just not about it which is why i smile that scorpios 
kind of have gone for me or they comment on my videos because a lot of Scorpios right off the bat don't get along with Leos because they think we're phony and they think we're fake because everything we do is showy. Uh, they just need to get to know us because I think Scorpio Leo is a great friendship, great relationship, um, more friendship, but yeah. I would say a Venus and Scorpio's love languages, top love languages, would be quality time um, because they need to know, that's how they, they have their closeness with you. If you have a rushed date, or a ru I, I can see you for 30 minutes, they're not gonna be able to get any, any substantial conversation done then. They're not going to be able to do any pillow talk with you. They're not gonna be able to relax into that sort of like, they remind me of like 3 a.m. conversations with people where you're like, we are connecting on such a weird level and it's like 3 a.m. at a sleepover and neither we're the only ones not sleeping and we are just connecting. Like, they want that. They don't want the quick, let's catch up, let's get coffee and catch up real quick and then I gotta go to a meeting. Like, that's, that will make them feel kind of abandoned or kind of like not a priority. So quality time, definitely. And I would say physical touch. And this is non-erotic physical touch when we talk about the love languages for the most part. Because uh, everybody likes to be intimate with their partners. But, you know, touching them, comforting them, uh, holding them. They are still a water sign, so they're quite sensitive and they enjoy that snuggle, the snuggle stuff. And because some Scorpios are not always comfortable saying their deepest thoughts and feelings right off the bat, they might be showing you how much they care about you by giving you little touches and spending time with you. Words of affirmation will definitely be there eventually, but um, you know they're not gonna show all their cards, so the tells will be in how much time they spend with you, because they do like their alone time. And then if they're, if they're touching you, if they wanna be by you. Scorpio is a sign where, uh, I don't think that generally people with Scorpio placements love hugs from just anybody. Uh, it's kind of like, okay, what are you doing there? They're, they're kind of like cats in that way. Of like, okay, you're rubbing, enough, you're rubbing my belly, that's enough. Or like, don't touch me, you can look at me, but don't touch me. They like their personal space. They like, um, you know, monitoring who comes into their space, and I respect that. So if they want to touch you and be up on you, and they're opening their personal space bubble to you, good sign. The tough thing about them not always being, I think, top verbal people is uh, Venus and Scorpio or Scorpio placements can sometimes expect you to read their mind rather than they verbalize what they want because they don't like to be needy even though we all need people but they they do need things to feel fulfilled in a relationship they don't like to feel that way they don't like to feel dependent on other people so they a lot of them don't verbalize what they need and then they just kind of want, wish that you could read their minds and they might get resentful because you can't read their mind probably, and um, and then they're not feeling fulfilled in some way, so then they become a little bit resentful. Uh, it's really just an effort to be understood without having to feel needy and having to ask for what they want. Because they are quite intuitive and psychic, and so I think sometimes they're like, everybody is like this, everybody should understand what I'm, what I personally need, and this is just a reminder to everybody, you gotta verbalize your needs, give people a chance before you write them off for just not caring for you in the right way. Um, as far as their money goes, they're not super spendy, and I wouldn't describe them as stingy. A lot of the Scorpios I know are just very good with their money. They spend, um, they spend on quality, and then they're not just kind of uh, impulsive shoppers. Of course, again, this depends on what's in the chart, and it depends on what's in the chart about what they will spend money on, but they're kind of in the middle. They are not flashy though, and they don't desire to buy people. So someone with a Venus in Scorpio is not, uh, most likely not gonna try to buy you with their love or their money or their gifts, even if they're wealthy, unless they've, they have that low self-confidence where they think this is really gonna loop somebody in and then maybe they'll wanna get to know me, which is actually quite sad. Um, but yeah, they, they probably wouldn't be interested in something substantial with someone who can be bought. Uh, they would look down upon that. They would see that as phony. Somebody that, that can be bought with money is just, you know, uh, not special and I don't trust you. Yeah, even if they are generous with you, definitely make it a point to show that you want a d uh, other types of connection because they will be wary if all you're interested in is them spending money on you because, like I said, they're already a little bit, they got their eyes open for people trying to take advantage of them or cross them in any way. When it comes to kind of seducing or things like that. I think of seduction as Venus, it's not Mars. Mars is like when you're in the actual act and whatever, you know, trying to keep it clean here, but 
and the, the drive, but Venus is the vibe of what gets it going, romantic. And Scorpios are funny because they love that emotional connection, but they they are kind of embarrassed or like turned off by things that scream romance too much. So I wouldn't think a Venus and Scorpio really would be into like rose petals on the bed and chocolate covered flowers and playing R&B in the background. It might feel like it's a little bit too much of a show, too much of a performance, uh, too much work, cheesy. The, a lot of Scorpio energy people are like, God, that's cheesy, or God, like, oh, I don't want that. I don't. Some of them are like, I don't even want a big wedding. Like, I don't want everybody looking at me. Let's just get it done. Ugh, it's cheesy. So definitely bring the romance by, you know, making them feel uh, special in a in a classy, elegant way. But you don't need to make it a whole show, make it a spectacle, or make them feel like they have to perform because it's gonna turn them off. <laughs> Some things they would really like would be private getaways, booking an Airbnb. By the way, not spons, but I have an Airbnb link. If you've never booked an Airbnb, you can book a home, apartment, whatever. I've done this so much where I just take myself on trips uh, and I stay in an amazing home and have a great time. So if you've never been on an Airbnb trip before and you wanna take a special Scorpio somebody, Click my link below, it'll give you a discount and it gives me a little discount on my next trip. So we both benefit from it a little bit, reciprocity. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> a Venus in Scorpio would, would like a private getaway, you know, go somewhere secluded, go up to the mountains and just not really have many plans. Just like we are just gonna be us together if they're comfortable with you. If it's too early, that might be like too intimate for them or it might be end up too, being too intimate for you. But um, when you know each other and trust each other, just to be able to seclude like little hermits together is great for them. Just times where you have long, like quality time, you have long amounts of time to spend with them where you can fill that with long conversations that are gonna make them feel close to you or long periods of just being physical together and not rushing, taking baths together, being in a private safe space where you can talk about or try some taboo things. Again, doing things that not everybody puts out for, for show, on display, they're gonna feel close to you and um, it's important that you get to know that side of them, whether that's the kinky side of them or uh, a little bit of their trauma that they may want to open you up to or things that they're working on within themselves or their secret dreams. Anything that's a little secret, them opening up to you on that is important and it's important that you're present and open to that. I feel like Venus and in, in Scorpio people can often say, I hate my ex, I hate them, she was a POS and he was the worst, blah, blah, blah. And some of that totally might be true. I mean, like I said, they, they kind of, with that placement, they're gonna get maybe hurt in love sometimes, they're gonna have to be reborn. But uh, also remember that the opposite of love is not hate, the opposite of love is apathy. When you don't care, you feel nothing. You couldn't care less about this person. And Venus in Scorpio, you know, if they're often expressing something as hatred, sometimes it's not hatred, it's just love that can't come back or hasn't been returned or love that was abused and it hurts them and it hurts them too much to admit that they still love. So the love has sort of turned into a pseudo hate. And that's I think why they're known for baggage or uh, grudges and things like that. It's just because, I mean, if you give yourself body and soul to somebody, it takes a long time to get over. Venus and Scorpio or not, if you've ever had that type of connection with somebody, it is like your cells have to be regenerated from all of that that relationship and that trauma and damage and things like that. So I get it. And as far as partners, they're looking for somebody not showy, not phony, so who's willing to talk about other things besides money and career and appearances. They're looking for somebody a little mysterious. It doesn't mean don't put on an act, but you know, somebody who, they're wary of people who show everything. And um, it doesn't mean you can't be an extrovert, but you know those people who kind of overshare or they kind of tell everybody who they're connected to and who they know and how much money they made and how much uh, this this jacket cost. It's, it's like how we say oversharing is a red flag. Either you're anxious or you're like making up for something. Oversharing usually is a red flag. And so Scorpio, in terms of liking someone mysterious, it's just someone who, can like keep things to themselves for a second. Cause also they're gonna be like, well if you tell me everything about you, if I tell you my secrets, are you just gonna tell everybody? Do you just have a big mouth? They definitely want a clever partner. They definitely want someone smart. Someone um, 
someone who who's just there who gets it who's quick they don't have to explain things to someone maybe with a darker sense of humor somebody who values emotional connections um someone who isn't just in it for the physical and yeah just at the end of the day someone who is willing to go deep um someone who seems trustworthy and has depth to them many layers and however that comes across again you do not have to be an introvert like brooding you know, if that's them, that can be them. You don't have to do that to attract a Venus in Scorpio. You can be mysterious in just like, how is that person, how is she so confident? Or how, uh, where did they get that sense of humor? Or, you know, how are they, they have so many different interests. I wonder how they, how they got involved in all of that. Or like Venus and Scorpio people can be a little bit quite obsessive with the people they love too. They might not even show it they kind of hide their cards or whatever they don't i'm not using the term correctly but you know what i'm saying like they don't put it all out on the table so venus and scorpio people might be obsessing from afar like you know they look at your pictures and they check you out and they you know they're just admiring you from afar because secretly they are kind of afraid of rejection so even somebody who just seems too good to be true actually might intrigue a venus and scorpio because they're like i know that you've got something dark and it might be something delicious and dark and i just need to find out what it is you seem like a goody two shoes i bet you're not so like anything like that really you can attract a venus and scorpio in many different ways so that's my video on venus and scorpio i hope you enjoyed it and i will catch you in my next one Mwah. bye guys